last job that was, huh? What's up guys, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna to be diving deep into the guts of the Honda J35 engine to replace the crankshaft. We're gonna be going to the shop and getting that done. If you're interested to see what it's going to take to be able to get to the starting point of our video today, go ahead and check this video out that I posted last year of the Honda Acura rod bearing issues when it first started to come about. I'll leave the link in the description below. And uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. This is a good one. And here we are. As you guys can see, we have the engine removed from the vehicle. Here moving forward, what we have to do is we have to remove the entire powertrain from the engine cradle. At that point, then we can separate the powertrain components, meaning we'll separate the engine from the transmission. But once that's separated, then is we're gonna be tearing down the engine a little bit further, maybe 50 or 60%, and then we'll be placing it onto an engine stand. At that point, then we can rotate the engine upside down uh, which will give us access to the crankshaft where we can remove it and replace it. Again, go ahead and view that video for teardown, but for now we're just going to kind of fast forward in time and we'll be checking in once the engine is on the engine stand and the crankshaft is ready to be removed. Okay, so here we are separating the powertrain components. The engine's coming apart from the transmission, getting lifted up and away using an engine hoist up and away from the engine cradle. This is the engine's flex plate, which attaches the torque converter to the engine. This needs to come off so that we can access and remove the rear main seal plate, which is behind here. This is held on together by um, eight bolts and comes off with a pry bar. Now we can uh, go ahead and put the fixture onto the engine. This is the uh, engine stand I was talking about. So it gets bolted up and um, it's a pretty cool contraption. Um, it's uh, crank powered, so meaning you could, uh, once it's on there, you could use the hand crank to flip it upside down completely like that, which grants a lot of access to the underside of the engine. Makes it really easy to access and remove the crankshaft. This is the uh, clip of um, teardown of the front portion of the engine. So these are the timing, timing covers coming off. Um, we are removing all the timing components, timing belt, timing belt tensioner, the pulleys, and ultimately we are going to also be removing the oil pump because that is going to be get, getting replaced and it needs to come off anyway because the snout of the crankshaft is protruding from the front of the oil pump as shown there. So once this is off, then we're pretty much ready. These are all the new components that are going in, new crankshaft. These are the new rod bearings. I have everything laid out in place and organized. These are our main bearings and these are thrush washers. We get new thrush washers as well. New oil filter housing um, and also a new oil pump as mentioned earlier. New oil pump gets installed. I think their reasoning is because they don't want any metal, stray metal fragments laying around in the engine that could cause some damage. So these are uh, the rod, main, rod caps coming off. Um, and uh, this is the special tool getting installed and the piston and connecting rod getting pushed down into the bore so we can kind of push them away from the rod journals and free up the crankshaft in order for it to be able to come straight up. So we go straight down the line. Um, I believe this is, this is cylinder um, six or three, I'm not sure. Um, this is cylinder one and the next one is going to be cylinder four. Yes. It helps to know the, uh, the order of things. Um, or I have it memorized, I don't know. It's just kind of, uh, it, everything flipped upside down. It's 
kind of confusing. So I'm used to looking at things straight on, straight down. These are the four side main cab bolts that need to be removed. Um, I break them loose with the, with the uh, ratchet first, and then I'll go in with the power tool to speed things up. There's four on the front, and now you're seeing four on the rear that are getting loosened up. I like to get everything loose before I go in with any kind of power tool. These are the main cap bolts that hold them straight down. Again, break them loose with a hand tool and then use power tools to zing them out. I do not like going in here. I've seen guys use impact guns and it just, every time I, I hear that, I just like, or see it, I just cringe. Like, hack, where'd you go? To, where'd you learn how to work on cars, right? So here's the power tool that I use. This is a Snap-on 3 8 long reach ratchet. I love this thing. It's just the batteries don't last very long. I mean, they, it did when it was new, but this thing is so stout. I love it. I need to get a new one. All right, so now the um, main cap bolts are coming out. You can kind of wiggle them out using the hardware. It can be kind of a struggle. It's, I mean, the dowel pins that are on the other side of the main cap, they're meant to kind of expand. Um, and so they're held in there pretty tightly, especially if it's never been taken apart since assembly. This one specifically gave me a struggle. I had to use the crankshaft. It's kind of like a pry bar, but I didn't care because we're replacing the crankshaft and the bearings anyway. So who cares if we damage this one? It's just, it's coming out anyway. It's getting replaced anyway. And it'll get placed in the bin when we're done. And here we go. Extraction. Success. Yay. And there's a bare block. This is what I mean. I, I don't know if I'd want a car that I know that that's had a crankshaft replaced. Not just this this specific car or engine, but any engine. You know? If you told me my Ferrari had a, a crankshaft replaced, I'd be like, no, I don't want that one. I want another one. I don't I don't want I don't want a Ferrari with a crankshaft that's been replaced. Are you kidding me? No. Give me a crate engine. These are thrush washers are coming out, and this is the new main bearing going in. Uh, locating tang gets located to the tang receptacle on the engine block, and it kind of just slips in place. Everything should go in together very smoothly. If if something is not fitting correctly, if something doesn't feel right, this is a lot. Of, this is a lot of feel. I mean, um, visually seeing it done in per, in on a video is, is one thing, but to know how it's supposed to feel is another thing. Engine assembly is like 90% feel. If something doesn't feel right, then something's wrong. Light coated engine oil going on to the main bearings. You need a good amount of oil when you assemble an engine. Um, this is the crankshaft position sensor pickup ring, and it needs to be removed and transferred over to the new one. Do you know how much this would suck if you were to forget to put this on. Um, comments below as to what you guys think would happen if this was not installed. Do you think the engine would run? Let me know. Anyway, after I clean it up, I'm installing it now. And if you look to the right of the pickup ring, you'll see that opening, that gap in the teeth. That's how the um, PCM knows where the crankshaft is in relation to the cams uses a hall effect sensor. All right, so now this is a new crankshaft uh, going in place and it should slip in smoothly. If it doesn't, then you got problems. Again, more oil. Off camera, I did put oil all over the crank journals and the uh, main journals. Uh, more oil. You can never go wrong with oil. Wiggling it around to make sure that it's kind of rotating smoothly. All right, so these are thrush washers and they get installed on this location right here in the engine. And what it does is it limits the amount of four aft play that the um, crankshaft experiences. Now, when I assembled my NSX engine back in the day, um, I went as far as measuring with the dial indicator on the crank snout, how much it moved to make sure that it was in specification. But I guess the manufacturer, they just know that, okay, this is gonna be good. So, hey. These are new main cap bearings being installed it's installed the same way as, as what you saw earlier. And again, more engine oil. Need a lot of oil. All right, so what's the next step? All right, so this is uh, 
denotes that this is for uh, crank main journal number one and the arrow points towards the timing belt. These can only go in one position and can only go in one way. So you cannot mix them up and just use a little hammer to tap it down. I know a lot of the YouTube mechanics out there are gonna be comment commenting in the comment section. Oh my God, he's using a hammer to assemble an engine. All right, tell me a better way. Tell me a better way. All right, so now all these are in place and we are going to move forward with everything. I like to clean up the threads on the bolts, which is I've done off camera. Make sure that they uh, screw in smoothly. Everything should be smooth. All right, so this is a pre-torque procedure and there is a sequence in which you have to go in and I have it marked on the engine block with numbers. I don't know if you can see that, but I wrote in Sharpie, which, which wants to go like in ascending order. I do a pre-torque and then you degree them. So to degree them, I'm using my trusty Snap-on Tech Angle Torque Wrench. Love this thing. And um, yeah, just going down the line in the sequence that's required. That's my coworker, Mark. Say what's up to Mark. He's just coming over to see what I'm doing. Anyway, just moving down the line. Easy peasy. And again, if you feel any resistance in when you're turning this while you're degreeing them, stop, back it out, clean it up, and do it again. And the side uh, bolts, they get torqued. They do not get degreed, but they also have a sequence. So you have to go in the sequence. All right, what's the next step? It's pretty much assembled now. Um, I think the next step is uh, rod bearings. Or rod, yeah, rod bearing installation and then, yep. Here we go on cylinder number one, it looks like. Rod bearing is getting replaced and we'll place it in the bore or the uh, upper portion of the connecting rod with a little bit of oil, use a special tool to kind of wiggle it in place and pull it upwards. I don't know, there's, a, there's something about engines that calms me down. Bonus points if you guys know where that's from. No, but really, like working on engines like this, this is actually, this is what I enjoy. I like doing this type of stuff, it's fun. Um, it's challenging and you know, you kind of try to beat records, try to see, all right, last time I did this, it took me this long. I want to see how fast I could do it this time. Here it is assembled. The rod bearings have not been torqued because I like to um, install the timing components first before I do that. That way I could rotate the engine freely without fear of pistons hitting the uh, valves. Even though I know nothing would happen, I just don't like the idea of, of uh, valves touching pistons because I've had bad experiences in the past. Bonus points if anybody knows what a money shift is. Anyway, um, I just want to point out that, um, yes, do not try to adjust your screen. This is um, timing components and engine mechanical timing being set with an engine upside down. I think this is a first for, for uh, mechanics and technicians out there. This is a, first, a definite first for YouTube. Try to, try to search on YouTube timing belt installed with an engine upside down. I guarantee you, you will not find one. This is the first, I'm claiming, I'm claiming notoriety here. I am the first motherfucker to install a timing belt upside down. I mean, granted, it might've taken me just a tiny bit longer to do it rather than it being right side up, but I still did it. I mean, and honestly, the I didn't edit this clip too too much, it's not sped up. Still did it in a timely fashion. Um, we are reusing timing belt components. So the timing belt is original. So is the timing belt tensioner. So is the water pump. And the drive belt is going to be original as well. We gave this um, customer the option to do a timing belt and pa uh, water pump package with this for uh, minimal upcharge, meaning that they would only be responsible for paying for the parts and maybe an hour's worth of labor. But they declined it, so I don't know why, but that was just their well wishes. So um, yeah, going back together with original stuff, it's fine, it'll be okay, I guess. I mean, we'll see you back in, when your car reaches 105,000 miles, right? 
hopefully. Um, so yeah, there it is. Uh, timing belt is now installed and engine mechanical timing is set. Let's pull that grenade pin. And now we are free to rotate the engine without fear of pistons hitting the, uh, the valves, as you see here. So now I can torque the connecting rod bolts, which you're seeing here. And then uh, after that, we are going to degree them. As you see, the engine's spinning over pretty freely, so that's what you want. You don't want any resistance. You don't want any kind of weird feelings. If you do feel anything like that and you're assembling an engine, stop, back up, and then reevaluate and find out what you did wrong. Because um, the last thing you want to do is start this thing up and then realize that you did something wrong and then grenade it possibly. So here is the degree that we're doing. I think the degree is completely random on, no wait, degrees on the main cap bolts are completely random. These are 90 degrees. Main cap bolts are like 47 or something. I'm not sure. I got to relook at the, uh, the um, information on the repair manual. Anyway, um, we're winding down to final assembly here. Um, at which point we'll be able to just reinstall it back in the car. But yeah, um, even though this video is like, what, 20 minutes long? Keep in mind that it did not take me 20 minutes to do this. It took me a, a, a good amount of time to get this thing um, done. Uh, I have about three hours worth of footage until my battery died. But yeah, there she is. Yeah, fuck you. What a shit job, right? All right, so there it is. Ready to go back in. Okay, so we have the powertrain installed back in the car with the new crankshafts and all the new components. The cooling system is filled, the oil is filled, the battery is connected. As far as I know, everything is plugged in. Let's go ahead and see how we did. First fire. Three, two, one. Hey! There we go. This car does have an exhaust leak. We're installing a new muffler and B-pipe on it. If that's coming through, that's what that noise is back here. Other than that, the engine seems to be running okay. This thing is out of gas though. So I'm just going to let this cooling system bleed. Uh, that happens when the thermostat opens and both the fans start to run. But for now, I'm going to eat my lunch. What a bullshit ass job that was, huh? They wonder why we're not getting these done fast enough. Well, Maybe if they paid a little bit more, technicians would actually have some motivation to get these things done. But as it stands, paying us peanuts to do these, these recalls when it turns into a crankshaft or an engine replacement, it's basically highway robbery for the technician. You heard it here first. Alright, I'm gonna eat. See ya. All right, y'all, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. And if you haven't already yet, consider hitting that subscribe button, giving a like, or even leaving, leaving a comment below. Um, let's have a discussion. What do we think of this rod bearing recall and the crankshaft replacements? But yeah, that'll wrap it up for today. Hope you enjoyed. Until next time, see you.